Let's get right into it. Number 7. The planet that shouldn't exist. Picture this. You're an astronomer. You spent your whole career memorizing the rules of how planets work. And then, boom, space just drops a cosmic middle finger in your telescope. That's basically what happened when scientists recently discovered a gas giant so big, so close to its star, and so absolutely not supposed to be there that half the astrophysics textbooks had a nervous breakdown. This planet, orbiting a relatively small star, is like finding a sumo wrestler riding a tricycle. The math says the star shouldn't be massive enough to form a planet that huge, the physics says the orbit should have torn the planet apart, and common sense says, okay, who hacked the universe? The thing about space is that it's disrespectful. Scientists create models, simulations, and carefully stacked theories, and space just strolls by like, nah, I do what I want. And this one planet, let's call it Space Karen, is rewriting our understanding of how planetary systems even form. Normally, gas giants form far away from their stars, grow up, and maybe migrate inward over millions of years. But this beast? It looks like it skipped the entire childhood phase and spawned right next to its sun, like it was speedrunning the Big Bang. The discovery basically forces scientists to rethink every rule about how stars and planets grow, because if a tiny star can make a mega planet, then the universe isn't following the blueprint we thought it was. It's like realizing your toddler built a working car out of Legos while you're still struggling to assemble a bookshelf. In short, the universe has glitchy DLC we didn't know about, and scientists are scrambling to patch the lore. Number 6. Your brain has a secret Wi-Fi. Imagine walking into a room and instantly knowing something weird happened there, even though nobody told you. No clues, no context, just a vibe so strong it hits you like emotional Bluetooth. Scientists recently discovered that human brains sync up, literally, when people interact, even if they aren't speaking. Your neurons start firing in patterns that match the person near you, like you're both accidentally connected to the same invisible hotspot. This isn't some mystical soul bonding thing, it's straight up biology. Your brain tries to predict what the other person is thinking, so it copies their internal rhythms, like a DJ beat matching to avoid chaos. The spooky part? It works even when the communication is subtle or unconscious. Two strangers solving a puzzle will literally have brains that start sinking, which sounds cute until you remember the last time you worked with someone who didn't understand basic instructions. Yes, your brain tried to sync with that. Scientists used to think communication was mostly verbal, but now they're realizing talking is basically the slow Wi-Fi version. The real source of connection is neural alignment. Your brain whispering, we're in this together, buddy. Even if your mouth is saying, why are we doing it that way? That's literally wrong. And if you're wondering why awkward people feel like they're lagging in a social situation, congratulations, your brain's Bluetooth is dropping packets. Basically, every time you vibe with someone, your brain is doing high-speed data transfer without your permission. So the next time you say, I don't know, I just felt like we clicked. Yeah, that's because your neurons shook hands behind your back. Number 5. Plants are low-key sassy. Somewhere out there is a plant that remembers you touched it, and it holds a grudge. Scientists recently confirmed that plants aren't just decorative oxygen machines, they actually learn from experience and change their behavior. This isn't consciousness, don't apologize to your houseplants yet, but it is plant-level intelligence. Take the Mimosa pudica, the drama queen of the plant kingdom. Touch it once and it collapses dramatically like it fainted in a Victorian novel. But here's the twist. Researchers gently dropped the plant repeatedly with no harm done. And eventually it stopped reacting because it learned nothing bad happened. That's right, a plant can literally calm down faster than some people. Plants also send chemical signals to warn each other about danger, like, Hey Susan, a caterpillar's chewing my leaves, heads up, and nearby plants shift their defenses accordingly. Some plants even change their growth direction when they hear vibrations from predators. Yes, they have opinions about who's chewing on them. Even more mind-bending, certain plants shift their internal clocks based on past light patterns, meaning they remember time like a very slow, leafy mathematician. You're out here forgetting where you put your keys, and meanwhile a ficus is silently calculating sunrise. So yeah, plants aren't just passive decorations, they're quietly observing, adjusting, adapting, and possibly judging your watering schedule. If Mother Nature had emojis, plants would absolutely be using the side eye. Number 4. Time is way less real than you think. You wake up late, check the clock, panic, and suddenly 5 minutes lasts 3 seconds. Later, you're stuck in a queue, and 1 minute stretches into an entire lifetime. Scientists recently confirmed this isn't just in your head metaphorically, it's literally your brain messing with time like a bored editor. Turns out your brain doesn't measure time directly, there's no internal stopwatch, instead, it reconstructs time based on how much information it processed. When lots of stuff happens, new sights, sounds, emotions, your brain packs the memory with detail, and looking back it feels longer. When nothing happens, your brain basically shrugs and deletes the footage. That's why childhood felt endless, everything was new, new places, new rules, new fears, new snacks, your brain was recording everything in HD. 
Adulthood? Same routine, same commute, same existential dread. Your brain switches to low power mode and suddenly five years vanish like a skipped YouTube ad. Recent studies show this time distortion isn't a bug, it's a feature. Your brain prioritizes survival, not accuracy. If something important happens, it stretches time so you can react. That's why accidents feel like slow motion. Your brain floods itself with detail going, save this frame. So no, time isn't flying faster. You're just living on autopilot more often. Time didn't speed up. Your brain just stopped taking notes. Basically, your sense of time is a highlight reel edited by a distracted intern. Number three, your body talks before you do. Ever walk into a room and instantly dislike someone without knowing why? Congratulations, your body made the decision before your brain finished loading. Scientists recently found that your body processes social signals milliseconds before conscious thought kicks in. Your posture, heart rate, breathing, and muscle tension all react automatically to people around you. Your brain runs a silent background check. Threat level, friendliness, dominance, weird vibes. By the time you form an opinion, your body already filed the paperwork. This is why your stomach tightens before a bad conversation, or your shoulders relax around certain people. It's ancient survival software, left over from when awkward could turn into eaten by something. Your body still treats social interactions like life or death meetings. What's wild is that this works both ways. Your body language sends signals you aren't aware of. You think you're acting normal, but your posture is screaming, please don't perceive me. Other people pick up on it instantly, also without realizing how. So half of human communication happens in a silent biological group chat nobody consciously reads, which explains a lot. Basically, your body is out here speaking fluent social anxiety while your mouth is still trying to be polite. Number two, reality is mostly your brain guessing. Look around you. The colors, the depth, the motion, the whole, I exist in a solid world vibe. Scientists recently confirmed something unsettling. Most of that is your brain predicting, not perceiving. You're not seeing reality in real time. You're seeing your brain's best guess, slightly delayed, heavily filtered, and aggressively confident. Your eyes don't send a full picture to your brain. They send scraps, edges, light changes, movement hints. Your brain then goes, cool, I've seen this before, and fills in the rest like an overconfident intern finishing a puzzle without the box. That's why optical illusions work. Your brain would rather be wrong than uncertain. Recent experiments show the brain constantly runs a prediction loop. What do I expect to see next? When reality matches the prediction, your brain barely pays attention. When it doesn't, boom, surprise, confusion, or panic. That's why you can miss something obvious right in front of you. Your brain already decided it wasn't important. This also explains why anxiety feels so real. Your brain predicts danger, your body reacts, and only later do you go, wait, nothing actually happened. Too late. The simulation already launched. So you're not experiencing reality, you're experiencing a carefully edited trailer of it, and sometimes the editor has a caffeine problem. Basically, your brain is a psychic that's wrong a lot but extremely confident about it. Number 1. You are multiple selves sharing one body. You think you're one consistent person. Same, you, all day, every day. Scientists recently discovered that this is adorable but incorrect. Your brain operates more like a committee of semi-cooperative personalities taking turns at the wheel. Different brain networks handle logic, emotion, habit, fear, creativity, and they don't always agree. That's why you can want to eat healthy and also inhale an entire pizza at 2 a.m. Those aren't contradictions. That's a meeting where nobody took notes. Brain scans show different modes activate depending on stress, fatigue, hunger, or social context. The version of you at work is not the same version of you with friends, or alone, or online, or five minutes before sleeping when your brain decides to replay every embarrassing memory since 2009. The wild part? There is no single boss self. Consciousness is more like a press secretary explaining decisions that were already made backstage. You don't choose thoughts, you notice them. This changes how scientists understand identity, mental health, and free will. You're not broken for feeling conflicted, you're just crowded. Basically, you're not one person. You're a group chat with poor moderation.